What we're going to be going over here are stock warrants issued with other securities and in this example we're going to be a, st a stock warrant issued with a bond here and we're going to be using the incremental method here to allocate the bond and the warrant proceeds and for example here Corporation A issued 4,000 bonds here at a thousand dollar par value per bond at 101 or 101 percent of par and each bond was issued with one detachable stock warrant. Okay so point one here after issuing the bonds here they were selling at 98 or 98 percent of par without the warrant attached here. So that's what the bond was selling uh, separately at here. And the price of the warrant could not be determined here. And both the bonds and the stock warrants here each could be sold separately. But what we don't know here is what the price of the warrant would be if it was sold separately. We know what the total amount here with the bond plus the warrant that was selling at 101 here. We know what the bond was selling at here alone that was 98 or 98 percent of par but we don't know what the, the value of the warrant is. And because of that, we're going to be using the incremental method here to issue this bond and this stock warrant. Okay, so first uh, to talk about here, a detachable warrant that can be separated from the security and traded s as a separate security. By purchasing a warrant, the buyer receives the right to buy stock, equity in the company at a fixed price in the future. And what we have to do is we have to allocate the proceeds from the sales of the bonds here with the attached warrant and we have to allocate the two securities using, and we're going to be using the incremental method here. And we're going to use the security in that incremental method. This is where you use the security, which can be determined the fair value. That's our bond here. And we have to allocate the remainder of the issue price to the security for which we do not know the fair value. And in this case, it's going to be the warrant. OK, so let's go up and let's look at this incremental method here. Incremental method is pretty basic here. What we do here is we have the fair value of the securities known, in this case it's the bond, and that's our basis here. And the remainder of the securities that are unknown here, in this case it's the stock warrant, are going to be allocated the difference here uh, between the total amount here uh, received for the bond plus the warrant sold together. And we know what the bond value is, and what we're going to do is compare that to total value and the remainder is going to go to the stock warrant. Okay so let's look at the case here uh, well let's just look at the allocation based on the fair value of one unit. What we're talking about one unit it's going to be one bond here plus one uh, a stock warrant that's attached to it. So what we do here is we take the bond plus the warrant. Well, we know that uh, was a 1,000 par value of the bond times 101 percent. That was the issue price here. So a bond plus the warrant that would be equal to 1,010 dollars here. Okay, so then we take our bond here. Well, that's a thousand dollar par, and sold separately, it would sell at 98 percent of par for 980 dollars. Okay, so we know the bond selling price here at $980. Now, we don't know what the war, uh, price of the warrant is here, but we know there's one per bond, and we know what our total uh, 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 price here for the bond plus the warrant that was $1,010. Then we know the price of the bond here at $980. So the difference here or the remainder here goes to the warrant. $30 each for the warrant. Okay, so we've allocated here our bond. Well, we knew what our bond was, so we allocated the difference here to the remainder for the warrant. Okay, so now allocation of our receipts between the bond and the warrant. So our total sale receipts here, well, there was 4,000 uh, units here sold or bonds with a attachable warrants here, $1,000 par value, sold at 101%, so that would equal $4,040,000. Now we allocated to the bond here, again, 4,000 bonds here, $980 there, selling price alone here, that would be $3,920,000. And then allocate to the warrant here, 4,000 uh, units or bonds here, one warrant per bond, $30 each per warrant, that would equal to $120,000. Now, we could have just taken the difference here between our total re sales receipts here of $4,040,000 less what we allocated to the bond here at $3,920,000. So the difference would have been allocated to the warrants here at $120,000. Okay, so we have one other thing we have to deal with when we have these bonds here. And we either have to deal with a bond discount or a bond premium. In this case, we're going to have to allocate the discount because the bond was sold at a discount. So what we allocated to the bond here was 
$3,920,000. And then the bonds par value, well, there was 4,000 bonds here at $1,000 par. That would be worth $4 million. So the difference here, $3,920,000 uh, $3, less the $4 million here gives us a discount on those bonds of $80,000. Because we allocated less here in total value of the bonds uh, versus the par value of the bonds. So there's your bond discount. Okay, so let's go down and look at recording this here. So what we have here is we're going to have 4,000 uh, bonds here issued at 101% with one detachable warrant per bond. Okay, so what we're going to have here, let's look at our cash account first here. So the bond with the warrant, well, there's 4,000 of them at $1,010 a piece or 101% here. So what we would do is we debit our cash here for $4,040,000. And then that's the cash received on the sale here. Next, we have to go to look at our bonds here. Our a liability on our balance sheet here. So our bond par value, well, we have 4,000 here at $1,000 par per bond here. So that we'd credit our bonds payable here for $4 million. And then we had this bond discount here, which is a contra liability account to our bonds, or it reduces our bonds payable here. And that we would have debited here for $80,000 based on our allocation. And that was our uh, bond par amount here, $4 million total par amount here, less the bond allocation of $3,920,000. Difference here gives us that discount here of $80,000. Again, remember the bond here is a debt liability. Now, moving over to our warrant value here. Well, we determined that to be $120,000 based on our allocation. And that warrant value, that's going to go to a paid-in capital account here in, on, as our equity account here on our balance sheet for those stock warrants. So we would accredit that here for $120,000. So that's our warrant, uh, our shareholders' equity. We increased our, our shareholders' equity by that amount here, $120,000. Okay, so just to review here real briefly here, when you're dealing with this incremental method, in this case, we whatever securities whatever securities you know their value at uh, those are that's our basis here and then uh, we have our total we know what our total cash receipts here when we sold in this case the bond plus the warrant together we knew what our total cash receipts is we knew what our uh, what our security was worth here and the bonds that were sold separately here and then the difference goes into what we didn't know. We didn't know what the warrant value was here. So really the difference between our known security here, the cash received for the combined security here when they were sold together gives us the difference here goes to the uh, security that we didn't know. In this case, it was the warrant. And remember, in this case, the warrant, that's a paid in capital here uh, to our equity account. Okay, so that takes care of our simple example here, the incremental method here. And pretty basic, and this is only dealing with the issue here of this bond that was issued with this warrant. And that's, that's the end of our speech here. Okay.